It's always the way on YouTube. You watch one video and then YouTube just recommends you all of those videos forever. So I watched one video about, um, it's a, a girl, I think she lives in the US somewhere and she lost her job and it's about her progress through the benefit system out there and also trying to find a new job in quite a limited, um, quite a niche market. But it's been really interesting. But I've now been recommended loads of other videos that are very similar. So I've seen a lot of videos of people who are losing their jobs, who are being made redundant. And they generally seem to, the ones that have been recommended to me, seem to be people in their 20s and 30s. And it's this realisation for them that having a single job is not a safe option that you can't trust your employer won't screw you over at some point for profit margins usually or because they make bad business decisions and now they can't afford to pay staff and a lot of those people are looking for work whilst they are looking for work they are doing side hustles and other bits and pieces to keep the money ticking in and then there are other people who have felt this sense of relief that they no longer are tied down to this nine to five, nine to six, eight to seven job and have decided actually maybe the side hustles I'm investigating are a way to go forward and have a little bit more job security. You might end up with less income but if you can also adjust your outgoings you might still end up earning enough to live on. Why not? So I did some notes about this because um, yeah, just talking about side hustle, the security of having your work in lots of different pots. So I have about eight income streams at the moment from various things, and it means that if one thing drops out, I still have all the others, and I might find a new one, and something might pay better, something might start to pay worse. So there is all that around the reliability of the side hustles that I currently use and also I have drastically reduced my outgoings so that I know that what I earn is more than I spend so I will be putting extra money in the bank this year and one of the things that I noticed was how people who had just lost their jobs jobs which they thought they would keep for years jobs that they thought were careers and start to question who they are and the direction of their life and I mean when I was young you know by the time I was 12 I knew exactly what I wanted to do with the rest of my life I've kind of in part done it I'm still doing the creativity etc etc but it's um, it's not like the only thing I do and I'm fine with that but people have had to question who they are and what they represent and I find it kind of amusing that people in their 20s and 30s who thought they had everything worked out now don't. I mean, the direction of my life has changed so many times and is always still changing. So I would say the last few years have been the latest change and I feel like I'm going through another kind of re... I can't think what the word is that I'm looking for. Um, another revamp of how I think of myself and how I earn my money and what I represent and I'm 50 now you never stop changing making your income making your job your sole purpose in life making it who you are is a very risky business because whilst a lot of people may spend a lot of their time at work there are other things that you should be doing. You may absolutely love your job, but your job doesn't have to be your entire direction. So you are constantly changing, and particularly now in the last four or five years since the pandemic, everything has been brought into question. And you need to keep an open mind. You need to be able to explore new options. You need to understand that nothing stays the same forever. So... Don't think about how, you know, you thought you'd set your entire life up because it takes one thing 
and everything can be totally changed. Look at my neighbour now, moving out, it looks like they've split up and now their lives are going to go in completely different directions. Who knows where they may end up? And, you know, things happen for a reason and I'm very much, because you can't control everything, this is the thing. You can get frustrated about the change of a situation and get annoyed and angry and upset about it. But I learnt, eventually, to just take a step back and say, this is happening for a reason. I am moving for a reason. I am splitting up with this person for a reason. This job has changed for a reason. And I just, I go with it because you can't change everything. And things that are out of your control, you just need to accept. Think of them as... I mean, maybe they, some of them will be really tragic and they won't be good things and they won't be um, fate giving you a hand in the right direction. But they are all things that happen and you can't always change them. So I try to always keep an open mind to how things may change. This is why I've never become too settled where I am. I, you know, the, the agency could send me an, an official email saying the landlord's selling up, the building's going, you're all out in six months. And you have to always keep an open mind. I mean, I've moved so many times um, since I've been up in this area. I think in the first year I moved something like four times because I couldn't find the right place that I felt I belonged. I would end up in house shares with complete nutters or just in horrible areas because you don't always get a chance to get a feel for an area, for an area before you move. So there were quite a few moves before I settled here. So the first four years involved a lot of moving around and trying to get a feel for what I wanted. And things really settled, started to settle once I became single and that's really become my next, um, that next bit of fate that came into my life and said, right, you can do this stuff on your own. You don't need to have someone else. And then I discovered that I enjoyed being completely autonomous and making my own decisions and I didn't need to have a partner. It didn't add enough to my life for me to want it. And now that I've become completely self-sufficient and then <laughs> six years ago I discovered that I could afford to live on my own if I just got to grips with my money properly. I mean I was already quite frugal by then. I was already saving hard and trying not to spend on anything that I didn't need. But I've really worked hard on that since I've been here to ensure that I get to stay here as long as I'm able to. But when change comes, it comes and you just have to deal with it. When it happens, it happens. So I just thought I'd do that as a little separate thought thing. I was going to put this into one of my uh, day in the life, week in the life type videos. But I thought I'd give this a separate because lots of people are questioning what they do. And I've been looking for a firmer new direction for a while and feeling that because I'm not running my business as much and I'm doing more of the side hustles, what, who am I now? What am I? What am I actually doing? And then I got into YouTube and then I got monetized on the YouTube. And what I do here, the unscripted the very basic, transparent, authentic channel seems to be a new direction for me. And it's allowing me to be more accountable because the things I say, the things I now have to do. It's allowing me just to talk things out of my head. And a lot of the comments that I get back have been very helpful. You know, over probably the last six months or so, it's probably even longer than that, it's enabled me to have the courage to and the ability and the mindset to start my pension, to start my ISA, things that I would not have done before because I didn't know where to start. And then a lot of the comments filled in the gaps. It gave me information. And that was really good. So that's that's been incredibly helpful. So comments on YouTube are mostly really good. You get the odd weirdo, you get the odd negative Nancy, um, but they're easy to get rid of if you don't want to, you don't have to answer them. 
and most of what I am seeing is very grounding. There's advice, there's also lots of people saying they're in similar situations, which makes you realise you are not going mad, this is what life is like now. And so that's given me this kind of new direction, this new purpose, and I always have to have purpose. I can't just triple on earning money, stick it in the bank, spend it on this, spend it on that, same day in, day out. Everything I do has a reason, even if it's a stepping stone. So a lot of my side hustles are probably stepping stones because they're not ways I want to run my life. But they've enabled me to get my finances completely under control. And now I've done that and now I have that bit of breathing space and I've improved things. Then I can start to look at how I improve other things and make changes which will mean that any side hustles which I don't think are putting enough into my life, I can then drop because this has been replaced with something else that's got a bit more oomph to it. It's a long, slow process. As I say, I've been here for six years and, and the whole six years has been a part of that process. This is not about quick fixes. This is not about things happening overnight. This is not about... I must get it all done now. Things take time. And especially when you are rebuilding finances and things, things take time. You have to be patient. You have to be able to plan and understand that it's, a, that it's all long term. But we're very much focused on, I want it all now. It's like Amazon Prime delivery. I want it now. I've got to have it now. The best things are worth waiting for. That's my thought for the day. Hope you find it useful. Um, do comment because I think a lot of us are in similar situations and just trying to work life out and life is all over the joint at the moment. That's for sure.